Okay, welcome back to the lectures. This one should be pretty quick, um, but we're going to talk about um, after World War II and during the Cold War, at least in the start of it, um, some of the anti-communism crusades led by the U.S. government, um, and then kind of digging in further into the impact that could have had or will have later on in the 1960s when you have a bunch of counterculture movements and you have the civil rights movement. Okay, <clears throat> so um, after World War II, and it was clear there was immediate tension between the U.S. and the Cold War, um, there were a lot of ads, propaganda, things from the government and from other people um, where uh, the average American had to sort of prove their loyalty to the government um, and prove they weren't communists. For example, President Truman, you know, the president who dropped the atomic bomb, the Democrat was under, uh, was the vice president of Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, required government employees to declare their patriotism to sort of prove it. Um, and if one was accused of not being patriotic and one didn't want to declare, there was no due process, meaning they could lose their jobs, they could be fired, they could be accused of being a communist without having much to do. Um, in Congress, in the House in particular, uh, you had the Un-American Activities Committee, which investigated communism, especially communism in Hollywood, you know, those people that make all the movies. Uh, you had quite a few producers, writers, directors, actors who were either blacklisted, so they weren't allowed to make movies again, and some of them served jail time. Uh, you also had leaders of the Communist Party, a political party in the United States, on trial, um, and, and some were jailed with accusations of them overthrowing the government. The craziest thing about proving your loyalty is there were a group of scientists known as the Rosenbergs. Uh, they were accused of sharing atomic bomb secrets with the Soviet Union. Um, Later on, it's been sort of proven that their case was a bit shaky. However, the judge ruling over that um, declared that they should be executed. You know, like, killed. Yeah, like the government should kill these people uh, for potentially sharing these atomic bomb secrets. Big whoops and uh-oh when you realize, like, 30 later, years later, like, mm, these people might have not done all these things that we're saying they do. Uh, it's important to note that there's a bit of political tension happening during this time in the Cold War uh, to help sort of understand the craziness the government's doing. So President Truman is the president who uh, was in office when the World War II ended, and he was up for re-election in 1948. Uh, this newspaper, so this is President Truman holding the newspaper, uh, it, his election was predicted to be won by the Republican opponent. Um, but in a crazy turn of events, like even all these newspapers, people predicted it wrong, uh, President Truman was re-elected as a Democrat. So we have this tension between the Democrats, those particularly coming from the New Deal era or the Great Depression era, and wanted to focus more um, a bit, I mean, they were still focused on the Cold War and stuff. Sorry, that's my dog squeaking her toy. Oh, she just stopped. Uh, they were still focused on the Cold War and stuff like that. Um, but they wanted to continue some of the programs of the New Deal uh, and trying to secure some more rights uh for Americans in whatever term that means. Um, so kind of the fallout for the Democrats gaining the presidency is within Congress you have some sort of craziness going uh, on to try to promote this uh, anti-communism crusade. And the biggest proponent of that is this dude McCarthy. He died at 47, like literally that is so young, probably because he was stressing out about silly things, you know what I mean? Uh, anywho, he was a congressman, 
Um, and he came out with this crazy claim that there were 205 communists in the State Department for Truman. There's no evidence for this, but he continued to come out with these claims when it came to Hollywood, uh, people within the government, people within organizations such as the NAACP. Um, and, it, and it really created this sort of chaotic atmosphere where people had to go in and talk to the House of Un-American Activities Committee uh, and sort of prove that they weren't communists. And if they couldn't prove it, maybe they'd get arrested and they would at least be blacklisted and unable to make money in the future. So all of this leads to an atmosphere of fear. Um, a, a lot of Americans were scared of being accused of being a communist. If one was accused of a communist, or was a communist, because, you know, like, First Amendment, right? You're allowed to believe in things, even political or economic things that are not uh, popular. They could be banned from teaching, from fishing, uh, from having driver's license. Uh, a judge ruled that um, communists could be jailed just for their beliefs, not necessarily for their actions, which is crazy. You had the regulation of uh, public information, so for example in libraries, uh, so a lot of libraries were told they had to get rid of books like Robin Hood, like, you know, steal from the rich and give to the poor. Uh, this atmosphere of fear allowed for organizations like the FBI uh, to establish a lot of power, a lot of precedent as far as investigating American citizens for crimes um, and, and not really having, like, oversight from anybody for the things that they investigate. Um, obviously, there's this fear of the Soviet Union, but historians sort of look back and think that Republicans in the House were trying to target some of the New Deal things, uh, maybe not as much targeting the Soviet Union. Okay, so this is where we're leaving off as for sort of like a synthesis thing. Um, so freedom and rights at home. So you have the United States and the Soviet Union sort of bad at combating each other internationally. United States is kind of saying like we're uh, separating people from freedom and dictatorship from communism, which is inevitably going to take away your rights. And the Soviet Union is sort of saying the same thing in an opposite way. Uh, they're going to separate people from the evils of capitalism and give them their economic rights from communism. At the end of the day, neither country really did any of that, nor had anyone's freedom in mind, right? And, like, whenever y'all say it's capitalism versus communism, like, eh, to an extent, I mean, but at the end of the day, like, both of these countries were the same in that, like, those who were wealthy and well-off had more power, and had more influence than those who did it. It's more of this con this combat between the sphere of influence that one can have. The more you can influence the world, you know, just from your beliefs, the more allies you have, the more resources you have, the more things you have. Um, anywho, um, at home, right, there's all kinds of crazy things going on. You still have segregation in the South. You also have Southern regions where uh, those states were the most impoverished compared to other states within the United States. You had an increasing inequality gap between people of color and whites. You had an increasing inequality gap based on where you lived. Um, and especially now that it's, at this time it's changing to where living within the cities, uh, you had less access to things than when you moved to the suburbs. Um, and so this question sort of comes up with the United States when they're talking about communism and these things. It's like, are we taking a minute to look back at what we're doing at home and trying to correct that in any sort of way? So this is going, this and kind of thinking about um, 1950s culture is going to help connect us to the 1960s where we're going to focus on the civil rights movement, uh, the counterculture movement. You have... Um, a movement for the LGBTQ community, and you have women's movement. So it's sort of this like ebb and flow again of people kind of taking themselves to the streets to try to get their rights. Okay, uh, I'll leave it at that. See y'all later.